Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims. Uh, it is my pleasure today to have with me two very special guests. Uh, one, Miss uh, Amy Dingle. Yep. Okay. And Mr. Les Hamilton. Les Hamilton. Hamilton. Very okay. Good. Yeah. Um, Ms. Dingle, you are currently Director of Outdoor Connections for the Five Rivers Metro Park. All right, that, that true? That is correct. Okay, and yes. I'll let you talk about that. What does that, uh, that title entail? Yeah, it uh, means that really I get the luxury of, of getting to work for this park district and being in charge of a, a majority of our public engagement programming. So whether okay. that's in outdoor recreation, outdoor education, or um, sustainability and education, that kind of thing, gardening, mm -hmm. um, okay. that's what's under me. All those natural things, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. And Mr. Hamilton, you are the uh, Inner West Priority Board Chair? Mm -hmm. Vice Chair. Vice Chair. Vice Chair. Okay. And I also have you as uh, Destiny's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's correct. Okay. Uh, interesting. Um, I had the wonderful pleasure of making the decision to raise Destiny at mm -hmm. the age of three, uh, not knowing the blessing that I would have raising that young lady. Uh, but Destiny pretty much grew up in the priority mm -hmm. board. Um, and one day we were there and Mr. Uh, Jim Wall, president of Greater Dayton Rowing, came in. He was talking to Mary Ellington. They had a relationship back in their job at... Uh, the Defense Electronic Supply Agency. Mm -hmm. And he, were, he was asking her about uh, support trying to get inner city kids involved into rowing. At the time, Destiny was swimming with the Dayton Raiders and really looking for a way out. They are rough. Dayton Raiders okay. are one of the best teams in the nation. And when you swim with them, you swim. So it wasn't really something that Destiny wanted to do. So I uh, talked to Jim about it, and we fortunately had an opportunity to see a young lady at Stivers, and she brought a boat with her. When she brought that boat, Destiny saw that, and her eyes lit up, and mm -hmm. as they say, the rest is history. Okay. Fell uh, in love with the boat. We tried out at uh, Greater Dayton Rowing, and she worked very hard to uh, be a part of it. Okay. Wonderful experience. Yeah, I know probably some individuals are wondering why I said <coughs> you're Destiny's grandfather, because uh, they might probably are not aware of some mm -hmm. of her accomplishments, and we're going to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. later. Uh, because I think it's very significant in terms of the, the things that she has done, she's accomplished uh, in this particular area. And we're going to talk about rowing. Um, and, and people have seen me, of course, at some of my shows, and they see me out, and they know I have a great variety of interests as it pertains to dealing with uh, this community and dealing especially with young people. Uh, certainly golf is one of those, baseball, right. track, football, basketball. But rowing is something that is esoteric, uh, known seemingly only to a few about some of the benefits that's associated with that. And I know here that Five Rivers uh, Metro Parks, it says here, has entered into an agreement with the United States Olympic Committee and U.S. Rowing to designate the newly formed Dayton Regional Rowing Community Olympic Development Program. That's a lot there. Uh, Dayton Regional Rowing is a uh, partnership between Five Rivers Metro Park, the City Boat Club, the uh, Dayton Boat Club, and the Greater Dayton Rowing Association. You're involved with that, of course. <coughs> and the Dayton Rowing um, uh, Program is the only U.S. Olympic Committee and U.S. Rowing sanctioned program for rowing in the nation and one of only 11 community Olympic development programs in the nation. Yeah, um, so a lot. So you are heavily involved in this whole process. So let's, let's talk about the rowing for, for a bit. I think it started in 2012, is that correct? Uh, actually, in, uh, it did start, the process started in 2012, but we were officially okay. uh, designated as a community Olympic development program, or CODP for short. Uh, in July of 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our mission is really to provide lifelong personal development and active lifestyles for Miami Valley youth uh, for the sport of rowing, and so that's really what that's about. Metro okay. Parks, and one of our Five Rivers Metro Parks missions and goals is to connect people to nature and outdoor lifestyle activities 
And so we wanted to support activity in the river in a variety of ways, and rowing mm -hmm. was one of them. And we thought this would be a great way. We have wonderful rowing clubs in the region. Okay. And we thought this would be a great way to bring attention to it. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Now, uh, Destiny, uh, talk about some of her accomplishments in, uh, in rowing. And I know we've seen uh, at least one film uh, mm -hmm. down at the City Commission where she came before the mayor and the commissioners and sort of shared some very exciting news with us uh, with regards right. to one of her competitions. Uh, talk about that for a moment. Well, one of the things that I had decided in, in, in my mind because uh, when I made a decision to raise Destiny, I said, wow, I have experience with boys, but none with girls, and they don't come with operating manuals like right. equipment right. in the Air Force. You know what you're doing, so it's and trial and error. I, I and know. I had, a, I, I had <laughs> a, a coach girls track at Belmont High School, oh. and uh, I said, man, okay. so <laughs> it, was <my> <laughs> <laughs> it was my first experience coaching young yeah. ladies, but go ahead. I, I knew one thing, that she was not going to sit on the couch eating Flaming Hots and watching Spongebob. Right. Uh, so I took her diapers off and put a bathing suit on her at three. And uh, we entered her into the city of Dayton mm -hmm. Recreation and Youth Services, learned to swim. I mean, she was so young that we, she couldn't even go in the locker room by herself. And since her grandpa had her, we had to use the uh, lifeguard's office to change her clothes. So she started at an early age. We uh, kept her busy. My mm -hmm. father used to say, uh, keep them so tired they can't get in trouble. Right. Keeping them busy. Yep. Keeping, it takes a lot of energy to get in trouble. So that was the philosophy with raising her. And it worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. So I kept her in the uh, athletic exercising mode when rowing. And I didn't know it. I did not know. I did not know the difference between rowing and a, a regatta and a steeplechase. It was just. Okay. And the club is right down the street. And I imagine 99 percent of the folks here in Dayton are the same Quite way. the same way. They don't know it exists. Right. So because of several attempts by Mr. Jim Wall to introduce rowing to uh, West Dayton, uh, we got involved and she, she did very well. Uh, the first day she got in the boat, their question was, where had she been rowing? Well, she hadn't been rowing. I think she was in the slide down at Kings Island. Mm -hmm. That's far different from rowing. But because she stayed <clears> busy, she was a natural and it, it just fit her and she loved it. She loved the outdoors. She loved. Uh, the friendships that she made, the traveling. So it worked out real well with her. Uh, Grenadine Rowing, like uh, most uh, rowing clubs, is a club sport. Mm -hmm. That's six days a week. Yep. That's a lot. So we kept her involved in it, and she did w real well. And they have basically uh, two uh, competitions, the erging in the winter when they get off of the river okay. and rowing in the spring, summer, and fall. She did good in erging. She actually set a record for grading, grading rowing in the erging equipment, uh, erging machine. And uh, in rowing, she uh, finished second in the 2014 national, which at that time was a big deal, the best ever for graded in rowing, but they've since surpassed that. Mm -hmm. uh, so she did very well, and that was the C finals mm -hmm. uh, lightweight double. I mean, okay. her and, uh, her teammate, and they really worked hard to get to that uh, that position. And at the same time, she swam for a Stiver swim team, and she it was a four-year mm -hmm. letter, okay. letter her in swimming. So right. she stayed pretty busy. Mm -hmm. As a result of her accomplishments in rowing, Greater Dayton Rowing offered, offered her a position as youth coach, which made her uh, the youngest African-American coach in the nation. The first year was rough because uh, she's rowing with the young ladies, they're her friends, and now she is their coach. Yes, she's coach. Didn't work so well. Right. I said, that's all right, hang in there. They will graduate out and you will learn. <clears throat> you will learn. So mm -hmm. she hung in there and now she knows pretty much how to uh, work with them a lot better. But it was a struggle at first. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. <laughs> when you had... This is life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah. You know, so as she learned, she got a little, a little better with it. Uh, she uh, opted to stay at Sinclair majoring in political science, her choice, not mine. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> her motto is, I am learning to make a difference. I said, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. And it, it goes back that, to talking with her grandfather. I said, girl, you can't say nothing until you learn something. So yeah. learn something before you say something. So 
she's a good young lady, an easy raise, and she's a, a person that uh, is out there trying to make a difference in a non-traditional sport. Uh, most people, like I said before, don't right. even know that rowing exists, and it's a yeah. wonderful opportunity to share the experience uh, with you and your program. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've noticed that, um, yeah, of course, I've known you since since high school. Way back. You know, way back. Um, you know, I'm not sure how many decades. We, we talk about at least <laughs> probably five decades. At least. Um, and you and your brothers are always active in terms of doing yeah. things in sports, and we talked about that a few minutes earlier, how um, we play sometimes three and four sports a day, and it mm -hmm. was not on Xbox. You know, we were physically, you know, out there doing our thing in terms of the baseball, the baseball, basketball, track, swimming, and the whole deal. Uh, it's one of those things that <clears throat> that's missing so much of young uh, with our young people today. And um, certainly, I don't blame them as much as I blame us as adults for not creating these opportunities, and sometimes maybe not communicating uh, widely enough what some of these opportunities are. And I know you were heavily involved in trying to get youth soccer involved in the city, get kids more right. involved in that program mm -hmm. as well. And um, uh, we partnered with you uh, with the school district when I was with the school district in terms of making those things happen. Which, you know, goes back to um, Amy in terms of some of the kind of things that you're doing. These are very, very wholesome and healthy activities that uh, Metro Parks is doing and creating these opportunities for our young people. And it's amazing sometimes, again, how so many young people and parents are just not aware. Uh, we, we talked about some of the, the type of um, um, challenges and crime situations that we have across the city. And we listen to young people who say, well, I don't have anything to do. And you have adults who say, well, they don't have anything to do. We can't get them to do this or can't get them to do that. And then when we list so many of the activities that we sponsor, free activities from the city uh, through our recreation department and also through Metro Parks, uh, through our churches, through the schools, and it's just amazing that we still have so many people say, I don't, I don't have anything to do. So um, it's, it's, again, we'll, we'll get there one day. So which is one of the reasons why when we were having the board meeting, yeah. Uh, I guess maybe a month or two ago, and I was listening to you, and I talked about Les and his uh, granddaughter. I said, well, maybe you come on the show, and we'll talk about some of these activities. And I know you have some things planned that, uh, that are coming up that I'd like to have you talk about, some activities, and some ways that young people can get involved in some of these activities themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're asking that more generally beyond rowing. Yeah. But you know, it, it is, uh, there's so much competition for people's time. Right. And um, like you said, the hardest thing is to really penetrate their knowledge point of what is out there and how, mm -hmm. how to get involved in a comfortable environment. At Metro Parks, we work really hard to try to give people the confidence and, and to build uh, their skills in whatever activity it is and, right. and make them competent users and hopefully change the, the culture over time that they choose to do positive outdoor activities on a mm -hmm. regular basis as opposed to other other things that may not be as positive. Mm -hmm. um, so in general, I mean, it, we are coming up into our main season of, of good weather. Right. And with that, we oh, have, yeah, we have lots weather. of facilities. Yeah. I mean, we have 18 different parks and we, we try to, uh, we say within Montgomery County, any households 10 to 15 minutes from a park mm -hmm. and uh, trying to educate people through various different materials, whether it's through social media, through our, our mailer that goes to every household three times a year, our Metro Parkways mailer that has all the programs and activities mm -hmm. listed in it. You can get online uh, and, and see those same publications. Um, and also just by getting out there in the community and talking mm -hmm. to different groups and trying to spread the word, word of mouth. Um, but people can get involved in, in really passive types of recreation where they're just coming and, and uh, spending time in a park or uh, going to the Second Street Market downtown and, and enjoying some, some activity there, whether it's mm -hmm. eating food with friends or, or listening to music there. Um, we try to have a variety of different programming. So, so we have in our urban parks like Riverscape, we have lots of entertainment 
types yes. of activities, you know, music right. and and uh, things that are, will attract people of, of all walks of life, all mm -hmm. ages, all abilities. Um, and then we also have, our, you know, our gardening programs and educational programs around those kinds of activities that they can get involved, uh, outdoor education and nature programs, or some of the more um, adventurous side of things in mm -hmm. our outdoor recreation. So mm -hmm. if somebody wants to learn to kayak or ride a bike, um, mm -hmm. you know, or, or get outside and, and um, go fishing, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're really trying to target youth and families together to do things right. and, and really try to change, move that needle of getting people outdoors and excited about being outside and comfortable and safe. You know, we have law enforcement that patrols all of our park systems and, mm -hmm. and really does a very good job of trying to be out there and make people feel safe and comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's harder and harder these days as you talk about these 21st century users and folks that are that are out in mm -hmm. technology and buried in their mm -hmm. phones or in television, you know. Sadly, we're, the, the data is telling us that the average person spending only six and a half minutes outside and six and a half hours in front of technology. Mm -hmm. And so that six and a half minutes is essentially waiting on the school bus. Yeah. And so we want to flip that around, right? <laughs> we we want to try to get back well, to what it was like lucky when we were active as minutes, kids. So. <laughs> and, and we think if we can do that yeah. with multi-generations and getting families to do things together and not just targeting one audience over another, right. that we can make a difference there yeah. and getting them outside. But specific to rowing, if somebody wants to come out, we do have a big event coming up called Try yeah. Rowing. It okay. is free. It's uh, June seventeenth at Eastwood Metro Park, and people can come okay. out and get in a rowing shell. And uh, okay. we do have skill progression for all of our programming like that, where we have a lot of free programs. And then as they move through the progression of skill and get more detailed, the the student mm -hmm. to uh, staff ratio gets smaller, and there is nominal fees at times, you know, for mm -hmm. for the value of the programming. But we right. try to have a variety of everything for everyone. Okay, uh, mentioned. Um the website again, so that those individuals who are trying to get additional information, if you could repeat yeah, that. Yeah, for, uh, for Metro Parks, it's metroparks.org. Okay. And uh, if they're specifically interested in rowing, it's metroparks.org slash rowing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have summer camps that are coming up, and I know people yeah. are looking for things for their youth to get involved in, and there's a variety of those, so metroparks.org slash summer camps. Mm -hmm. And they're anywhere from a half a day to a week long, so mm -hmm. we try to have a plethora of different opportunities to meet different demands for people mm -hmm. on different days of the week mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but that's where they can really go and, and learn a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if they go to the rowing section or the Get Active section on that website, they can learn more specifics about rowing mm -hmm. or any of the other activities. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. I know you were talking about some of the activities and outdoor adventures. Every year I have the, the opportunity and the pleasure of taking the young men that I mentor in the uh, Jack and Jill Botillion down to Camp Kern for oh, yeah. a weekend. Mm -hmm. And we get to go through the uh, five or seven zip lines yeah. that, uh, a lot that of we fun. have there. Right, you know, you know, a couple hundred feet up in the air, zipping through the trees. Get your it's, blood uh, rolling, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does that. Um, you know, there are some other benefits here that we talk about as far as these programs are concerned. You know, obviously, there's the issue in terms of just the camaraderie that they develop with their friends mm -hmm. and uh, you know the the peer support that they learn their their skills that they learn the discipline both group discipline as well as self-discipline and and so many of these things are all related to their transition from youthhood to adulthood and mm -hmm. uh, way too often sometimes we forget about that uh, additionally, we can look at some of these great scholarship opportunities. And also, as you talked about um, uh, your granddaughter Destiny and the, the issue in terms of moving to world of work, um, let's talk about some of the scholarship opportunities. And I know, again, from the issue in terms of looking at some of the non traditional sports that you've been involved with, and this one's another one, of course. Uh, your thoughts in terms of how these things translate into helping a young person, for example, pay for college? Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, uh, 
Rowing is to the girls what football is to the boys when it comes to scholarships, and I didn't know that. But okay. uh, rowing is a tremendous scholarship generated because of Title IX. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of opportunities. It's an Ivy League sport, and the challenge is how do you get into rowing? Mm -hmm. uh, we in this community are very blessed because we have two clubs that are really uh, aggressively seeking young people to get involved. And because of our Dayton Regional uh, Development Program, it's a one of a kind. And I'm listening to this as it develops, as Destiny comes home with all this information. I'm saying, wow, you know, how, how do we get our kids involved with this? Uh, free scholarships and an opportunity to see this part of the country. There's a lot of traveling involved. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of expense involved. So the challenge is how do you get inner city kids involved in an Ivy League sport uh, and take advantage of these wonderful opportunities. And there lies the, the real challenge. Uh, one thing about rowing, uh, it, it is, and I'll use Destiny's term, you don't see fat people out on that river. It mm -hmm. is a real calorie generator. It, mm -hmm. it, she, she comes home sometimes and her hands are, are bloody and I said, wow, what have you been doing? You know, she looks like a carpenter. She feels like a mm -hmm. carpenter. But if you're out there and you're rowing, uh, that's, that's what happens to you. Yeah. What we try with our uh, demonstration program with uh, uh, Swim to Row, we put young ladies in a structured team environment, and I like that term. They go in as a team, and there are a lot of programs out there, and I asked the parents, I said, well, we're trying to get funding. Why don't you just go ahead and enroll the girls into uh, Recreation Youth Services Level 1? Mm -hmm. You don't need me or this program to do that. Just do it. But they don't. So they wait for the team to do it, and they'll do it as a team. The girls, when they participate, they participate as a team. As a team, a little rough. Uh, once they get to level three, if they don't pass level three, and they won't because it is tough, then they all fail. If one fails, they all fail. A lot of parents say, well, that's not fair. And we say, well, that builds teamwork, which is what they need when they start rowing. They really have to be together in one team in order to synchronize those oars. So our role, our goal is to, uh, in the pursuit of chasing scholarships, our goal is to make sure that we put young, talented girls on the docks mm -hmm. and give them to Greater Dayton Rowing to, to do their thing. When they get to Greater Dayton Rowing, they're ready to, to learn. Our, our job is to, to get them there. And, and that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most of them don't swim. So they have to learn how to swim before they can. And that is a separate show all to itself. <laughs> Young yeah. ladies learning how to swim. Yeah. But, you know, we, we found some situations, again, with the, uh, the Dayton School District, for example. Just probably in the last seven to eight years, they've exposed a lot of young people to, uh, to swimming. And I know, um, um, Ann Fran, I think it is, who's a, uh, an attorney, but she volunteers Ann. her time at Stivers, yeah. uh, coaching yeah. both uh, swimming well. and, uh, and golf, as a matter of right. fact, uh, and they do a tremendous job in both of those. And we've seen some young people who, for the first time, just learned how to swim, who wind up with scholarships, you know, in terms of going to college. It happens. Yeah. Uh, and I know you have some thoughts too, I'm sure, about uh, some of the things you're doing, how <coughs> those things are transcending into life skills, work skills, and also scholarship opportunities as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, what we're really talking about is access, right? And if mm -hmm. you can give people access and give them the skills to develop and grow confidence both in, in themselves and in life, which I think rowing really does develop people. <clears throat> excuse me, to, mm -hmm. to build those life skills, then um, they will go in positive directions. And so scholarships are important to, to Metro Parks and to Dayton Regional Rowing. Um, we at Metro Parks do have a, a scholarship opportunity where people can apply for that. And, um, and so that's on a, on a, I guess, rotating scale. Right. Um, and the Dayton Regional Rowing is out there actually soliciting dollars right now. And the number one thing they want those dollars to go toward is scholarships. They also want to support athletes that are in the pipeline 
um, for development camps and that kind of thing to help support mm -hmm. them. And then okay. also just outreach and equipment purchasing because equipment for this sport is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the access to developing those and getting support from, and we have tons of support in this community mm -hmm. from businesses, the right. private and public sector. And so just continuing to capitalize on that and, and informing people like things like this show and, mm -hmm. and other opportunities to let them know what's out there and, and really how those youth are developing in a positive way from right. these different um, programs right. is really what we need to continue to c communicate to people to continue to get that support to help make the, mm -hmm. the swim to row program go. And, and I absolutely agree less that learning how to swim builds the confidence to give people True. to get in that rowing shell and, and yeah. try. And the, the other thing we're really trying to do is diversify the audience a lot more mm -hmm. and give a lot more opportunities. So okay. we feel that's important. Yep. You know, and it's, the, it's uh, swimming is a lifesaver. Uh, mm -hmm. You just never know. Developing those team skills, those uh, conflict mediation skills uh, are, are so critical as far as life is concerned. How to uh, identify and resolve conflict at its lowest level. Uh, while you're young, you know, you learn those skills and you carry those skills throughout your lifetime. Uh, and like individuals have said repeatedly, that life is a team sport. It's <coughs> not something that you do so on, on an individual basis. We just yeah. got a couple minutes left, and I knew time would fly by real quickly, uh, as it has. Um, what's coming up? Uh, is there anything that we missed that you would like to make sure that the audience is aware of before we um, unfortunately have to say goodbye? Well, we're definitely coming into the rowing season, and, and both of our clubs have very talented athletes okay. that are in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so you can get involved by Learn to Row programs. The Tri Rowing program on June 17th, which is a mm -hmm. Sunday, is free at Eastwood Metro Park from 10 to 3. So we'd like to encourage people to come out and try that and get exposed to the sport in a very safe um, way with, okay. with guided staff. And, uh, and then otherwise, metroparks.org to check out other opportunity to get out mm -hmm. into act active lifestyle opportunities in a in a very safe and comfortable environment. So okay. those are some of the big things. So between the summer camps and, and uh, some of the support of the athletes getting out there in their season mm -hmm. and ramping up. So, okay. Yeah. Last couple of seconds, any closing Yeah, uh, our program comments? is a separate uh, program. Uh, we're, we're grassroots all the way, uh, developed by the Priority Board to help these young ladies make it to college. Um, if you want more information on it, you could go to swimtheroad.com, and that's a pretty simple one. Swimtheroad.com has a website that uh, demonstrates where we're at, a lot of videos that shows uh, the young ladies, our startup development team in action, and it talks about the challenges that we have to raise money, and that's always a big challenge, okay. particularly for young folks in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you. Um, you know, Amy, Les, uh, thank you again for, for being here. Thank you. And again, thank you to my audience. I uh, appreciate this. Uh, this has been another edition of In the Spotlight with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims. And you can uh, check us out on YouTube as well as the uh, City of Dayton's website, www.daytonohio.gov. Okay, thank you again. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Okay.